Don't pull the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, it would be a take home test. I, I, I don't like rescheduling tests. I just usually just, anyways. No, don't, don't. It's on record. It's on camera. Is it recording? Let's see if it's recording. Oh, it is. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so increasing, decreasing functions and the first derivative test. Uh, there's no worksheet today. So again, we'll, we'll finish this section and we'll do some homework problems. And then we'll just review for the test. So. Oh, it's exam one. No, it's exam two. It's exam two. Yeah. But on the announcements, you put exam one. Oh, did I put exam one? Yeah, Monday, February. I need to fix that. Sorry. <laughs> That's how it works. It's like, that's exam one, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so here's, here's the idea. Um, so you have a function like this. Say you have this, this picture here. This is a graph of a function, right? And so, uh, notice something. Uh, is, th is this function uh, increasing or is it decreasing? Increasing. It's increasing, right? It's an increasing function. So this, is, this function is increasing. And notice that if you take any point on the graph of this function and you look at the slope of the tangent line, does this have a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive, positive slope, yeah. So the derivative is positive because the derivative is the slope. So if you have a positive first derivative, your function is increasing. So positive first derivative, your function is increasing, right? Positive increasing, positive increasing. Okay, so uh, positive increasing. Okay, and then if you have something like this, uh, this is, is this an increasing or a decreasing function? Decreasing, decreasing yeah. Um, so you, you have to look at it left to right. So left to right, it's getting smaller. And if I pick any point here, and you look at the tangent line, does that have a positive slope or a negative slope? Negative slope. So this is a decreasing function. And the slopes are negative, so that means that the derivative is negative. So positive first derivative, your function's increasing. Negative first derivative, your function's decreasing. Okay, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> we just do problems. Um, I could write all that down. This has to happen on an interval. So like on an interval i, if the first derivative is positive, the function is increasing. On an interval, if the first derivative is negative, the function is de decreasing. Um, let me, uh, I can give you the steps or I can just do an example. Let's just do a problem. Let's just do a problem. Let's do a problem from the homework. Let's do a couple of problems from the homework. Let's start off with, I want to pick a, a one that's relatively challenging. Um, okay, yeah, let's try this one. Let's try number six. Number six from the homework. Number six. So if f of x equals, anyone have the homework up right now? Anyone have it up? Oh, you're working on it? Okay. Uh, x to the fourth minus 32x plus one. So x to the fourth minus 32x plus one. So we have this, this here. And there's a bunch of questions. It wants the critical numbers. It wants to know where the function's increasing and decreasing. And it wants the maximums and the minimums. Um, so maybe part A is critical numbers. I'm just trying to think about like the exam because that's coming up. Part B might be uh, increasing, decreasing. So where, where are the intervals where it's increasing and decreasing? And then part C might ask for the relative maxima and minima. So relative, relative extrema. I'll give you time to write this down. So. <clears throat> You'll have just one of these on your exam that's coming up, uh, just one. It's a lot of points though, because probably like five, five, five or something like that. I mean, because it's multiple parts. So those are the steps. So solution. So let's do part A first, part A. So part A is what we were doing last time. So when you're finding critical numbers, you take the derivative and you set it equal to what? Do you remember? Zero. zero. Yeah, to zero. So we take the derivative of this beast. It's not a beast, but f prime of x. So this derivative, you just put the four in the front. So you would get four x to the third minus 32, like that. Yep. And you check to see if it's undefined. I don't think it is. It looks okay. And then we set that equal to zero. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. So take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Um, now we have to solve this for x. So maybe we can add the 32 to both sides. So, so plus 32 
plus 32. I don't want to cross that out because I want to keep that. So 4x, okay, I'll do it. 4x cubed equals 32. And I guess now maybe divide by 4, right? Divide by 4. I didn't make any mistakes in my other class today. So, sorry. So, no, I'm not gonna, so I'm not gonna mess up. So, I just ate, so like, I slept a lot. Well, kind of, x cubed equals eight. x cubed equals eight. How do you get rid of the three? What root do you take on both sides? Cube. The cube root, yeah, very good. So take the cube root, and I think it was Aaron who asked about this last time. When you take an odd root, you don't need to have the plus or minus, right? Just, just, just the plus. So that's the critical number. It's in the domain of the function, right? You can plug it back in. So everything is good, so any questions on that step? That's part A. It's pretty easy, pretty easy. Okay, part B. Part B is to find out uh, whether it's, this is still solution, so we're still on the solution. To find out where it's increasing or decreasing. So what you do is you make a diagram. So this is a little bit different than what your book does. Um, I, I like doing it like this. So I'm gonna draw a picture. This is called a sine diagram for the first derivative. So that's, that's what it's called. It's called the sine diagram for the first derivative. Sine diagram for the first derivative. I used to teach a class called Concepts of Calculus. It's like calculus for business majors. And in the book in that class, this is how they, how they did it. And I think it's much better than the way our book does. Our book has like a little table with pluses and minuses. So you draw a number line and you plot your critical numbers and any other points of interest. So like if you had a vertical asymptote, you'd have to plot it. If you have like some issues with the domain, you have to be aware of that. Like say the domain is zero to infinity, then you gotta put a zero here, okay? So if you have a vertical asymptote at three, you put a three here. So any domain issues and critical numbers. And then you pick test points and you plug them into the first derivative. So if the first derivative is positive, it's increasing. If the first derivative is negative, it's decreasing. So what's the easiest number in the world that's smaller than two that we can plug in? One or zero? I'll, I'll do zero. So, so let's, let's check zero. Check zero. So you do f prime of zero. So you plug it in to the derivative. That is the most important thing to remember. So here's the derivative right here. So it'll be four times zero cubed. I know it's just zero, but I'm showing every step minus 32, you don't have to show the work for this. You can just, you can just say less than zero, right? You can, you can just do this, f prime of zero, less than zero. You can use your calculator to do that. Yes, Josh? What one? I'm plugging it into the derivative. Good, see the prime? Yep, good. Because mm -hmm. it's a sine diagram for the derivative. Good question, yeah, super key, super key. So it goes into the derivative. So in this case, would it be decreasing or would it be increasing? Decreasing. decreasing. So what I do is I do this, like that, because it's decreasing. Mm -hmm. I draw a little arrow like that. Uh. Mm -hmm. Now let's pick a number bigger than two. What's a nice number, big four? Yeah, four. So f prime, I guess I'll write check two. Uh, no, check, check four. <laughs> Check four, I feel the mistake's coming. F prime of four, four's kind of big, but it's too late, someone said it, so we'll do it. I wanted to use three. Uh, four times four cubed. <laughs> it's too late, I already wrote four. I already wrote check four. I can't, I can't back down. <laughs> Your friend's not here. No, she's coming, she's running all over. Oh, that's okay, she'll be here for the review then probably. Yeah. That's good, it's worth it. Well, yeah, we're gonna review more than I expected today. I looked at the homework, I'm like, oh yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not that bad. I mean, once you can do this problem, in theory, you can do all the homework. We'll just do harder ones after this. Uh, four to the four, uh, anyone? Is it 64? Four, no, 256. 256, yeah, 256. So 256 minus 32 is 224. It is, 224, right? That's positive. So it's positive at four. So does that mean it's increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. So, so then you write the arrow like this. Uh, this is how I do it. I like this, now we're, now we're gonna write the answers down. 
because of these, these arrows. These arrows will give us the answers. So decreasing, increasing. Because it's positive, so it's increasing. And the most important thing is that you plug it into this, into the derivative here. All right, so now we can write the answers down. The question wanted to know the intervals where it's increasing. So first let me say that it's always parentheses for increasing, decreasing, no matter what. It's always parentheses. So let's do increasing first. So ink, I'll just put ink. Oh, I'll spell it. I won't be lazy. Increasing. So it would just be 2 to infinity. So from 2 to infinity, it's increasing. So I'll just put parentheses 2, comma, infinity. So that's the answer for increasing. Now I guess we can do decreasing. So decreasing. Trying to improve my handwriting. Decreasing. So decreasing would be this piece here. Where would you start your answer? What would you write first? Very good. And it's always parentheses. Excellent. And that's it. Another five, five, ten points in the test, whatever it's worth. Probably at least five each. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that hard. I'll find out. I'll, I'll we'll, when we review. I'll, I'll, I'll check. So increasing, decreasing. Did you all have a review for the first test or no? Not much. No. Not much. Yeah. It was like I don't even remember what we did. Did we do anything? Like. We just do as much problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you know there's not a point further down that ends up decreasing or increasing? And like if you have the odd number function or odd number polynomial. <laughs> Very good. Ever hear what he asked? Deep. He says, how do you know it's going to stay positive? How do you know it's not going to become negative somewhere else? Check this out. So here's the picture. You know it's increasing here. You know it's decreasing here. So let's suppose it was negative over here, right? So if the derivative is going to go from positive to negative, it's going to have to be what at some point? Zero. And we know all the places where the derivative is zero already. Boom. And we, we know all the vertical asymptotes. That was deep. He said, how do you know it's not, you're just, I'm picking one number, and I'm saying it's positive everywhere, right? That's because if the derivative goes from positive to negative, it has to be zero at some point. That's actually called, uh, there's a theorem that states that. It's called Darboux's theorem. D-A-R-B-O-U-X. Yeah, I think it's French. And Darboux's theorem says that every derivative in the world has that property where if it's going to change sign like that, it has to be zero at some point. It's called the intermediate value property. I think it's in my notes. In my notes, it actually says it. Uh, yeah, every derivative satisfies the intermediate value property. In other, in other words, if it's going to go from positive to negative, uh, it has to be zero at some point. That's not in the book, but that, that's it. Wow. 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 Oh, I got like goosebumps. It's really creepy. Yeah. Everyone see that? Everyone understand what he asked? So because think about it. If it's going to be negative, it's, it's going to have to be zero at some point. We know when it's zero, right? We know. We know when it's zero. Good. Yeah. What if it's like a square root and it's like positive and negative? Would that be two, like, one equals zero? There could be more places where it's zero. Yeah, but you have to check each one. So, like, if I have a five here, I got to check stuff over here, too, because it might do this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. All right, part C now. Any other questions? All right, part C. We're going to write the answer down. Part C... This is going to sound ridiculous. So we, we just did this. So what is this? We're about to do it. Right? I didn't even write it down. I'm just going to show you how to do it. So basically, you look at the picture. The first derivative test says, if the derivative changes sign at a critical number, you have a max or a min. So look, it goes from positive to ne uh, it goes from negative <laughs> to positive. <laughs> no, no way. Uh-uh. <laughs> it goes from negative to positive. And look, uh, like, look at this, look at this. So, decreasing, 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 zero, increasing. What do we have here, a min or a max? A min. So the arrows give you the picture. It's awesome. That's why I like doing it this way. The book doesn't do it this way. They use like pluses and minuses. It's really weird. So, so we have a min. So we have a relative min at x equals 2 from the picture. So by the first derivative test. Again, the first derivative test just says that if this happens and it's a critical number, you'll have a min or a max. If this was an asymptote, it would not work. And you would catch your mistake on the test. Because when you try to plug this back into the original, if it's an asymptote, it's undefined. So now to find the actual minimum value, we have to take this and go back to the OG function. Go back to the original. 
So plug it into the original. So plug into the OG, OG means original, funk. Plug it into the OG funk. So F of two. So then you go back to the original. So two to the fourth is, I'm gonna skip a step. No, I won't, I will, I will, I'm gonna do it. What's two to the fourth? 16. 16. Minus 32 times two is 64 plus one. Hmm, where's my calculator? Oh. <sighs> I'm not taking any chances. Did I make any mistakes last time? No. I didn't? Really? Wow, I made a bunch of mistakes in my other class, sorry. <laughs> this is negative 47. So that's the actual minimum. The homework wants the ordered pair. It would want you to write two comma negative 47. That's what the homework wants. On a test, I will accept either. Just know that the minimum is actually the y value. Okay, the minimum is actually the y value. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So you're saying on the test we could just say if there's a relative to two? You need either, no, you need either the y value or the ordered pair. Yeah, so on the test, either of, the, either of these is okay. The real correct answer is this one. The homework wants this. Um, this is actually where the min happens, but mins and maxes are y values, so I always had a, I don't have a problem with it. I just accept that the homework is a little bit wrong. They always want this. It'll say relative min, and like you fill in the x and the y, but the minimum in math is actually just the y value. Right? It's actually just the y value. Mm -hmm. yeah, technically, it's the y value, so. That's it, that's everything. That's, that's increasing, decreasing, and this was the first derivative test. So like if you had, say you had this, say you had three, four, seven, and you have, these are all critical numbers, and you have this, 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 this. Say you have this, just, just for fun, fun, just fun. Fun, that's an F, fun. So in this case here, what would you have here, a min or a max? A max, and then what would you have at four? And what would you have at seven? A max. Do you know the first derivative test? Right? That's all it is. Right? It's really easy with the picture. But they have to be critical numbers. Okay. Let's do a hard one now. Let's like raise the bar. Like let's do something that's like something ridiculous. Let's see if there's anything ridiculous. Let's see. Uh, so is there no, is there no max? max. No. no. Oh, there's no max. Thank you. No max. Mm -hmm. Who has to write that in the test? Uh, I guess not. No, you wouldn't. Because if you don't write it, I'll just assume that you think there's not. So, what's that? Oh, can I see? Yeah. Bring it up. Bring it up. So, I don't want the camera to turn. I don't want to read. You can come up. You can say hello. Okay, 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 okay. No, come on. I'll cut it up. I'll cut it up. Quick, 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 before it follows me. <laughs> oh, I see, said the blind man. Yeah, this one had a max. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good, that's the old test. You printed it? Oh, you're going to get an A. That's so good. Yeah, so on the test, on that test, it was fill in the blank. I'll check to see what it's like on, on your test. Yep. So if you have multiple numbers like the 3, 4, 7, and you have the arrows, do you have to check, like if you've already figured the arrows for 3, do you also have to check both for 4? Or you got to pick a number here, pick a number here, pick a number here, pick a number here. But I'm saying you wouldn't have to pick two different numbers if mm -mm. you had 4 and 7. Mm -mm. Oh. Mm -mm. Good question. Let's do number 9. Number 9 looks like it's... Uh, a formidable question. Did I use that word right? Yeah. For, for, formidable. For, formidable. Sounds like an opponent, like in a video game. Number seven. It's a form, formidable enemy. <laughs> so f of x equals, I already forgot what it was. Anyone have it? x plus seven. Uh-huh. Beautiful. And I guess it's the same thing as before, so. Is this seven or nine or nine? Yeah, which number did you say? Uh, the one with the fraction. Yeah, so, that was seven. so x plus seven. Yeah. Number nine. I mean number nine. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so bad. I'm sorry. No, it's not a point. Come on, because I didn't mess up. F of x equals I'm x plus seven. X plus seven. Over x squared. Thank you. I want to do this. This one's harder. This one's good. It's good. It's good. Thanks. Oh, I know for a fact that you'll have a question like this on your test, and the question will want the second derivative. 
I know because I made the test, I remember now. And I almost took it out and I left it on there. So we'll just keep that in mind as we go through the problem. Um, we'll, we'll review later, but you do have one like this where you have to take the derivative twice. By the way, if you were going to take the derivative of this, even before I write the question down, what would you do? Rewrite it. Yeah, you want to break it up. That's the key. Okay, so let's just go ahead and, and go through all the parts again. So ink, dick, ink, deck. Oh, no, no, no. CNs. 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 Ink, deck. Everything's abbreviated. RAL, EXT. What language are we speaking? <laughs> Critical numbers, increasing, decreasing, relative extrema. So we'll, we'll answer all of these. I wonder if it's like this or it's fill in the blank. Again, I'll look later uh, when we review. But this one's a really, this one's harder. This one's much harder. So solution, solution. So let's do part A first. So first we have to rewrite this. So to rewrite this, a lot of people have a habit of bringing it up. You can do that, but I don't recommend it because it will make things harder sometimes. It's typically easier to do it like this. This over this plus this over this. I know it's more uncomfortable, but it's good for you. It's good. It's worth it. Totally worth it. Mm -hmm. So this over this plus this over this. This over this plus this over this. This over this is just 1 over x. So it's f of x equals 1 over x. And this is 7 over x squared. I know I could have done something there and I didn't. I wanted to. Let's do it in the next step. What is it you have to do before you take the derivative to make it easier? What can you do with the x, x's? Bring them up. Hey, Ethan! So this is x to the negative 1 plus 7x to the negative 2. So if you had a question like this on your exam where you have to find the second derivative, yeah, you do this and then I just take the derivative twice. It's really easy. Okay, so don't use the quotient rule on this. It makes it really, really messy. Um, it's like a trap. It's like quotient rule me. No, don't do that. Oh, this is harder than I thought. Okay, so now to find the critical number numbers, what do we do next? Derivative equals zero. Yeah. So it's gonna get this is actually harder, much harder than I thought it was gonna be. Okay. So f prime of x. So you put the negative in the front, so you get negative x to the negative 2. Uh, 2 times 7 is 14x to the negative 3, because you're subtracting, right? We set this equal to 0. Yeah, this is pretty sneaky. Yeah, this comes up in 3.4. In 3.4, which is after the test, there's a problem like this in the homework, and it has a square root on the bottom. And that problem, you have to take the second derivative. It's very similar. This is very similar. Mm -hmm, it is. So x is undefined at 0. And even at the beginning, we see there's a VA at 0. So 0 is a problem. Let's make a note of that. Note. Yeah, good, Aaron. I saw it, but then I forgot about it. Then I didn't say anything. And I figured we'd, we'd mention it later. But yeah, yeah. Whenever you're aware of it, just make a mental note or write it down. Because that's going to be important. Mm -hmm. When we're factoring stuff like this, we can pull out the negative, and which power of x do we pull out? Do you all know? Yeah, wh why negative 3? Because it's the smallest one. It's that evil trick where you take out the smallest power of x. Right? Whenever you have powers like this, always take out the smallest one. That was the technique. That's when I, when I saw this, I was like, oh, like, I didn't expect that to happen in this problem. So now we have to figure out what goes here. I think it's just x, right? Because if you put a 1 here, when you multiply these, you end up adding the exponents, right? Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then this is going to be plus 14. Good, Logan, plus 14, parentheses, equal to 0. It's really delicate, right? Really like, yeah, I did not expect this, so I'm really glad we're doing it. I mainly picked the problem because I saw the fraction, and I thought, oh, they're definitely going to have to break that up on the test, so let's do it. But, yeah, deep. Let's go ahead and bring this down, but any questions so far? We have plenty of time. We have a lot of time, so. Everyone okay with why we pull out the negative 3? Mm -hmm. Let me just do it again. Just do it again. Yeah. Okay. So, the negative is the negative, and then the x, 
And then you just basically pick the smallest number. So negative 3 is smaller than negative 2. Then you put a parentheses and you say, okay, now I have to figure out what goes here. So I know it has to be an x because I know I have to multiply it by this in order to get this. So x to what power? Uh, to the 1. Because 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. And then here, neg there's a negative here, so this there's a negative here, so this has to be a plus. And you've already got that, so you just need the 14. And that's equal to 0. No, it's worth it. It's good. I don't know if this will come up on your exam, by the way. I don't know. I don't, I'll find out when, I, when we review. Uh, I definitely know it comes up on the, sec, on the third test. Now we can bring this back down, so let's rewrite it. Notice I keep writing f prime of x every single time. That's a really good habit to get into. Structure is really important. Try to be as neat and as organized as possible. If you're neat and organized, your math will get better. You know, like, notice I wrote f, 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 f prime, f prime, f prime again. So bring that down, so negative x plus 14 over, I put the negative on the outside, so it's out here, and then x cubed, and this is equal to zero. It's especially important in this section because we have to plug numbers into the derivative, so if your work is neat and organized, it's likely you'll do better on the test and you'll make less mistakes. I was always really good, I had terrible handwriting, but I was always really good at like showing my work. So even though I didn't know what was going on a lot of times, I was able to like, you know, <laughs> make it, because I always showed all the steps. <laughs> so there's our derivative. So it's equal to zero. Whenever you have a fraction equal to zero, oh, oh it's undefined at zero, but zero is not in the domain of the function, so zero is not a critical number. Okay, it's still a VA though, so we'll need it. Whenever you have a fraction equal to zero, what can you automatically set equal to zero? The top. The top, yeah. So x plus 14 is equal to zero. But why is it not a critical number? Zero? Because if you plug it into the original, it's undefined. Um, mm -hmm. You get zero plus seven over zero, and that's game over. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Josh? Would you bring the negative down? Very good question, Josh. I was waiting for someone to ask. Good. So let's say, let's say you, don't, you, you don't need to because you can write it like this, watch. Say so we have this, I can multiply by negative x cubed. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Worth it. Yep, good question. Yep. Yep, that always causes, yeah. Yeah, Austin. Did you uh, rewrite it? How'd I get this? Ah, there is a reason. Good, good. There's a reason, yes. He's asking why did I rewrite it? Because at some point we have to plug numbers into this thing. So I want it pretty. <laughs> so back to the structure thing, right? So make it look really pretty. You want to keep it really clean. Yeah? If you leave it like at the bottom, would it be okay? It would be okay. It would make it harder on you when you're plugging in numbers. Right, like when you're plugging in five, you're gonna get like negative five to the negative three. I mean, that's just really gross. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you could though, it would work. It'll work, you'll get the right answer. Yeah, you could. Uh, we have to solve this equation now. Whoa, I know, it's like game over. Uh, so you use x equals uh, negative 14. <laughs> that's the... Oh, finally. So what is this, what, what are we even doing? What do we find? Critical number, yeah, the critical number, very good. So this is the critical number, it's our CN, and you can plug it back in and there's no, there's no issues. Good stuff, I like this, this is, this is calculus. This is calculus. You can do this in Calc 2 also, uh, depending on what school you take it out, who your teacher is, these questions randomly show up in the homework. Like in class you'll be doing something, and then you go to the homework, and all of a sudden, this question will just show up. You didn't even, it just shows up. <laughs> I know, because I teach Calc 2, and I just, I just assign it. Like I just assume they know how to do it, because it's Calc 1. So it's, you'll see it again. Except you'll have weird functions like arc sine, arc tangent, stuff like that. So Exciting times. Increasing, decreasing. So now we're going to draw that, that line. Do you remember what it was called? A sine diagram. Yeah, let's do it. So a sine diagram. This is the sine diagram for the first derivative. After the test, we'll be doing it for the second derivative. It's the same thing. All right, so we have to plot negative 14. And 0. And 0. Very good, Logan. I have lost points in class. I have made... <laughs> it 
All right, who, who got that? I think everyone did, right? It's okay. How many points do you all have, by the way? Do you really have a lot? Yeah, we're doing double points. Yeah, we'll do triple after this test. After this test, I, starting now, I'm never gonna mess up. So it's it's on. Like this this is this is it. All right, let me write it down because I had a piece of paper that had all the points on them. I don't know where it is. Yeah, it is 200 points. But it's okay. It's 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 still like you all have a lot of points. So all uh, uh. I know Ethan has a bunch too. Like on top of I saw your name like multiple times on my paper. I'm like Ethan, Ethan. There's like a pink pen. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pick, let's pick test points. What's a, what's a nice number smaller than negative 14? Negative 15? Negative 15? Did you say negative 1? No, it's a deduction. No, 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 no. <laughs> negative 15. <laughs> so, so take negative 15. And, oh, where do we plug it into? Into what? Into the derivative, yeah, very important. That is the worst mistake you can make on this problem is plugging it into something else because then I'll be like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> if you plug it in here and you get it wrong, I can be really nice. So, so plugging it in here, we have negative, and then we have negative 15 plus 4. This work you can skip. You're allowed to use your calculators, right? So, ugh. This is going to be, uh, yeah? Uh, oh. oh. Or if we already see that it's going to be coming to a positive number, we can just... Right. For the test, yeah. you can just do <laughs> less than zero or greater than zero. Yeah. Uh, negative one and negative... This is one over negative 15 cubed. When you cube a negative, it's still negative. Isn't there a negative in front of the whole derivative, though? There is, but this is a negative up here, see? So it's negative and negative becomes positive. See, because negative 15 plus... Oh, slipping, and then this is less than zero. So on the test, just to emphasize what Logan said, you could do this. Okay. What if you mess that up? I can also be lenient. Like if you pick the wrong sign. Um, when you plug it in, though, it lets me know that you know that you're going into the right place. You know what I mean? So like if you show some work, at least on one of the pieces, then I'll know that you know that you're looking at the derivative. So, so we, we got negative. Uh, so is it decreasing or increasing? Decreasing. Yeah, so I'll do the arrow. I like little arrows. What's a nice number smaller than zero and bigger than this? Negative one. Good. We're, we're thinking the same thing. Good. I'm glad no one said negative pi. Like, no. <laughs> I had a student like that once. He was. You pick weird numbers. Negative 0.76? <laughs> 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 so, so it's negative 1 plus 14. So negative, so it's just 13. I usually don't show this much work, but it's all right. Let's see, this is negative 13 over negative 1 cubed. It's negative and negative. That's positive. It's a positive number. So it's positive. So does that mean it's increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So we go up. We go up. Are we done? No. Yes, Ethan? Negative 1. You have a negative in front. Here? Would that be 1 plus 14? Yeah. So, so negative 1 plus 14 is 13. But then this negative comes up here and makes it negative 13. See? So this is 13 and the negative carries over. You see it? I didn't skip any steps. Watch, 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 watch. I'll show it like this. Look. That's all I did. So these becomes this. Okay. Yeah, and then and then that one's negative one. So it's negative thirteen over negative one. And that's thirteen. It's a lot of negatives, right? I know. <laughs> all right. What's what's a nice number bigger than zero? One. Let's do it. So f prime of one. Plugging it in here uh, is, let's see, so negative, and then we have 1 plus 14 over 1 cubed. This is going to be negative, I believe. This is negative 15, I think. So it's less than 0. So that means it's decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. <laughs> That's a 5. That's a weird falling apart 5. So now we can write the answers down. Uh, we can write the answers for increasing and for decreasing. So let's do ink. And let's do deck. 
So increasing would just be in the middle here. Right? So it would be negative 14 to 0. That would be the, the increasing part. And then decreasing would be two pieces. You have this piece and you have uh, this piece. So it would be negative, negative infinity to negative 14. And what's the other piece? 0 to infinity. Don't use a union. Technically, if you use a union, it's wrong. Um, because this, if, you, if you take the union of these, so if you do this, is a really small, it's a technical point. The question wants the intervals. This is not an interval. I think we've talked about this before, haven't we? Intervals, we haven't, that was in this class. So this is not an interval. Um, in mathematics, an interval is a set where if you take any two numbers in that set, every number between them is also in that set. So this is not an interval because I can pick like negative 20, that's here. I can pick two, that's here. But there's plenty of numbers missing between these sets, right? So like I can pick, because here's negative 14, here's zero, so we're looking at this set here, right? So I can pick a number here, blah, pick a number here, blah. Every number between them has to be in the set. That's not true, there's lots of missing numbers. So this is not an interval. So I, I think the homework marks it wrong if you put a union, I'm not sure. Um, they, they specify to use a comma. So, subtle point, just a slight technicality. That's, that was all, oh, we're not done. So that, that's part B. That's part B. Let's come over here and do part, oh, it's the same problem. Um, part C. So for part C, we have to find the mins and maxes. So I like to do this, just draw a little picture. Okay, interesting. So what happens at negative 14? What do we have there? A minimum, yeah. So min at x equals negative 14. Let's go ahead and finish that process too. So to find the minimum at negative 14, where do we plug in the negative 14? The original, yeah, very good. You gotta go back to the original function. So go back here. Okay, go back to the OG func. So f of negative 14 is negative 14 plus seven over negative 14 squared. That's why calculators were invented. Now we, we got this. 14 squared is, I should know, one, oh, what, 196? Yeah, I can't believe I forgot that. It's weak. Seven over 196, I should know that too, but I don't. Anyone know what that is? It's like 0.107. Isn't, isn't it a nice fraction though? It should be a nice fraction. Thanks, yeah. Did you do that in your head? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that's, that's the min. So on a test, that's fine. The homework wants an ordered pair. So the homework would want um, negative 14, comma, negative 1 over 28. So either of these is okay on a test. Either of the circled, uh, and, well, it's already 245. Either of these circled answers. I feel like class just started. Like, I feel like it's only been 10 minutes. Yeah, it's weird. It's like the twilight zone. Do y'all know what that is, the twilight zone? Yes. Twi twilight zone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've seen it, yeah. It's a show, it's a really old show, black and white. I love the Twilight Zone. It's really good. How do they make it so good with like cheap props and stuff, like little toy robots? Like the toy robots like the scariest thing in the world, like ah! <laughs> like the little plastic flying saucer is creepy. <laughs> so that's that. Yeah, what about this, what's this? Yeah, good. I was, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for everyone to say max. Yeah, this is an asymptote so that you don't get a, you don't get a max here. Let's say you mess up on the test. You say, oh, it's a max. You plug it back in here, and you're going to get zero on the bottom, and so you'll catch your mistake. So do we have to write something for that? No, it's good. Oh, I guess, as AC was saying, if it's fill in the blank on the test, so you would just say no max, maybe. Right, just what, what if it's a fill in the blank? Right, then you got to say it. Right, because you don't, don't leave the blank blank. I mean, you know, say something. Say something, yep. Um, any questions on this stuff? Any questions? There's one with the trig function. Um, we could do it if you want to do it, or we could review for the test. You want to review for the test, really? Really? 